secant lines versus tangent lines. Suppose we have a function f of x. Now, one thing we could ask is, as we start at one point, say at a, and go to another point, say at b, we could ask, on average, how much does the function increase? In other words, we could just connect the dots, as it were, from A to B, and we would get something called a secant line. Now, finding the slope of a secant line is relatively easy. The slope of a secant line would just be the change in Y, F of B minus F of A, over the change in X, B minus A. And again, this would give you the average increase of a function. If this were a position versus time graph, the secant line would give you the average velocity of the function. So that's something very easy. Now, turns out, mathematicians for centuries were trying to solve a much harder problem, not the secant line, but rather the tangent line. See, so secant line touches the function at two points. A tangent line touches the function only at one point and that's a much harder problem to find the slope of a tangent line because notice that we don't have a change in y or a change in x we only have one point so both change in y and change in x would be zero which is not very helpful so with ordinary geometric means with ordinary means that we have of thinking about lines in the xy plane it is impossible to find the slope of the tangent line and in fact this whole problem finding the slope of the tangent line is one of the central questions that calculus answers so without calculus it is not possible to answer this question also i'll point out why is this important well, again, on an x versus t graph, the slope of the tangent line would tell you the instantaneous velocity at a single point. And more generally, the slope of the tangent line tells you the instantaneous rate of change of the function, how much the function is changing at that specific immediate instant in space and time. So this is an introduction to the problem of calculus.